So as we've seen before, the SMT uh, plugin for archives is what we use to manage archives. Uh, here's an example in which we're looking at data that's sorted. The archives are sorted in chronological order. So, you know, we're going from, um, this would be um, the 23rd of October to the 12th of December, 12th of December to 7th of, or 1st of July, 1st of July to the current time, etc. So this is a series of tags, or excuse me, a series of archives that have been uh, created automatically by the auto archiving system. That's why you'll notice that some of these have different names. Uh, this is the standard archive name that was created when we first installed the system, but as you can see the others here were created by the auto archiving. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on. So let's see some of the things that you can do with this system, Pi system management tools. Well obviously just about anything you need to do with archives you can do. View the details, create new archives, register, force a shift, make it writable and shiftable, etc. So the only real gotcha here is if you're working with a Unix based Pi 3 server, this is uh, this is not going to be available for the Unix based Pi servers. This will only be available for the Windows-based Pi servers. Now we have a directed exercise now. And at this point in my directed exercise, I'd like to, well, I'll demonstrate it first and I'd like you to try to do it the same. I do want to warn you though, there is some stuff here that you didn't, wouldn't want to do on a production system. So by all means, don't force your archive to shift on a production system. So let's switch over and let's go into, I'm looking at a different server now that's got a little bit more data. We're going to take a look at uh, how things work on this. And if I go into Operation, Archives, first of all, f let's figure out where the primary archive is. Well, I can figure that out just by looking at status. It says primary. You can also tell because the end time is always says current time. Basically, current time is, uh, it's not a, it's kind of a misnomer. That really means that there's a zero. Um, so if you notice the empty archive, say current time for start and end time, that's because they basically have zeros as their end times at this point. But there's some interesting things you can see about this. Uh, for example, this isn't terribly important, but remember our discussion of primary and overflow records? Well, this particular archive has 47 primary records and 32768 overflow records. So the overflow records, this is out of a total of uh, how many? I think this is out of a total of about 65,000 records available. This is a 65 megabyte archive. And it's about half full with overflow records, uh, extending from record 30, 65,000 down to 32,000. That's the that's where we are within the overflow record rate here. So let me look at my current server. I'll also sort this 012. Now here's my current primary archive. This is the archive before that. Let's take a look at its overflow records. Okay, if we look at our, whoops, let me move that again. There we go. Yeah, now the, um, yeah, this uh, this really didn't, we didn't see a lot of, of overflow records on this particular archive. We didn't have a lot of data going into it. So if you look at that archive that has shifted, there are 24 primary records but no overflow records because none of those primaries overflowed. Interestingly, look at this empty archive. There are no primary records because it hasn't been initialized yet. Now, let's see if we can figure out what the target archive is of this in this particular situation. The target would be the destination of the next shift. Well, I would guess it would be this right here because it's the on, only empty archives, or the only empty archive. But you can verify that by looking at this. This is the shift prediction. Uh, this is telling me that in, what is that, um, in 12 years, <laughs> this is not filling very quickly, uh, it, in, at, on that date we predict that this archive is going to shift, is going to fill and shift. Now at this point, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do another archive shift. I'll go ahead and select the primary, choose force shift, but don't do this at home if you are working on a production system. Just wanted to show you how this works. Again, I'll force the archive to shift. What we should see is that closes out this as the primary and it substitutes this pi arc 002 as the new primary record. And I believe it just changed. Let me go ahead and sort this again. Oh, it looks like it was sorted already. 012. So yes, PyArc002 is now the primary record. So this is the oldest data. The second oldest data 
and this is the most recent data.